Bill Harburger Park Urban Ecology Center. I want to uh, thank you for coming out to the first Saturday program. We have a first Saturday program either on the west side here or on the east side off of Blanco Road. Every first Saturday and fourth Saturday programs. We also have a walk on the fourth Saturday here at 8 o'clock. And it goes through the Oak Loop Trail and the Savannah out, out this way. Oh, I'm really glad to start this program today. This is the first first Saturday program that we've had in this facility. And uh, we just had it grand opening in September 7th. And so if you haven't been around, please feel free to see the gathering hall down here. It will be some great uh, wedding. If you have your weddings here starting in January or any activities, we have the classroom right here we'll, where I'll be conducting educational programs. For those that don't know, here's the restrooms. And then the offices are right here. This will be the home for the Alamo Area Master Naturalist and the City of San Antonio Parks and Rec Natural Area. Uh, just so you know, upcoming events, the last Saturday of the month, fourth Saturday, will be on East Side, will be turkey talking. We're going to talk about turkey. So please come out for that. Their program starts at 10 o'clock. This one's starting now and it gives me great pleasure to introduce Amador Ocio or Tall Mountain from Apache Del Rio Intertribal. Morning everybody. Morning. Morning. I'm going to explain a little bit what I have here. This is sage. It's California sage. It smells really good. We usually do our blessings with this or any kind of sage, also with sweet grass um, to take away the negativity and bless areas like this, like I'm going to do here now. Um, first of all, of course, I have to bless myself in order to bless the area, which I did already. Um, and ask the Creator, you know, to, to help us uh, with the uh, upcoming events here so everything can be peaceful and everybody can have a good time here. No negativity. Susan, Mark, right? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we usually start with the east. Bless the east. Yes. And uh, start with the east and bless the blessed uh, great creator. Thank you for allowing us to be here. You see a little prayer in Apache. Ishtagote, Dawate, Sota, Usen, Beke Gwanda, Skaigunte. Sky, Mother. She put the sage by the drum here, just to keep us company. Before we start drumming, we usually go. Oh, I'm sorry. I can introduce myself. My name is Amador Ocio. I'm with Apache Del Rio and the tribal organization here from San Antonio. We're homegrown. Um, the founder of the group, uh, we've been around since 2004. I was just telling our friends over here that uh, we're very excited by ne about next year. It'll be our 10th anniversary uh, together. Um, we are a 501c3 uh, organization. Uh, and uh, what we usually do, uh, Presentations in schools, um, children's shelter, churches, or you name it, you know, anywhere there is isn't there isn't any alcohol. Uh, we're very uh, we're protective over our drum and, and of course our ceremonies and all that. Uh, so uh, I'm very excited to be here. Uh, the reason I formed this this we formed this group was to uh, bring our people together. There's a lot of us that are lost out there. We don't have a home to. A lot of people uh, say, well, where do I go to or what do I do, you know? Uh, I'd like to find out a little bit more about my culture or about 
other tribes, cultures, and so on. Uh, so we formed this group so we can bring our people together and uh, learn from each other. Uh, lots of us are not full blood. There are very, very few around anymore. Um, I'm not saying they don't exist, but they are out there, uh, especially like in the reservations and all that. Uh, but uh, I'm very happy here to be here with you all. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and bless the drum. We usually use some tobacco on it. Wait for my drums to get here. directions. Usually when the drummers get around the drum, we say a little prayer before we start, just to honor uh, our, our brother. This, this drum is made out of buffalo, so to honor our brother the buffalo, and of course our grandfather the tree, Mark, uh, for uh, allowing us to, uh, to play on this drum. Of course, a great creator for allowing us to be here to drum and uh, to let us harmonize and uh, uh, sing with our hearts. I'm going to go ahead and, and start off. Uh, I usually do a song by myself just so I can go some time and see if my drum is get here. This is, a, this is a song from a tribe, the, the Popila tribe from California. Like I mentioned before, we are uh, in a tribal. We had a brother that, that, that's from the tribe, the Coquila, from California. And it's from the Gato clan, the cat clan. Thank you. 
you open up the powers like that. But it all depends what what state you live in or what city. Uh, every, every power is different, but they're more or less follow the, the, the same format. A little bit of differences. Uh, they follow. Uh, they, they open it up with the gourd, uh, gourd dancing, and then they go into uh, the grand opening. And uh, that's when everybody gets in and, and uh, all the dancers are going to compete. And if it isn't a competition powwow, uh, they just do it just to uh, to get our people together and uh, you know, sing and, and dance. Um, usually the, they, they, they honor our veterans. They do the veteran song. They do the, the victory song. If we're in war. Uh, can't really sing the victory song because we don't know if we're going to be victorious or not. Um, they, after they op do the grand opening and everything, they, they sing those, those three songs, um, they uh, go into the intertribal dancing. Intertribal dancing, that's when everybody gets out. And uh, uh, intertribal, that's what it means, you know, all the tribes. So uh, they go and do their dancing and usually uh, I don't know if anybody's familiar with cumbia dancing in the Mexican style, but they usually go <laughs> counterclockwise. And, uh, and when we're doing the Indian dancing and we do the circle and all that, we go clockwise, always. Uh, same when we're wearing a, a prayer circle, so always clockwise. Unless you have a, a veteran that's, that, that uh, has been, one of your family members has been killed, it doesn't have to be a veteran. Uh, Everybody's dancing this way, and uh, just to honor your loved one that has passed away, you go the opposite way. And, uh, just little things like that, you know, that, that we do different, you know. And uh, But the intertribal, usually I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate a little bit how it's done. I, I don't have the music right now, but uh, when we uh, get the music going, maybe we can get have a couple of volunteers here. But the, the man... Is this, these are just simple steps. I'm not gonna go all, all the way out. But uh, the man uh, usually um, tiptoes, like going for the cookie jar, <laughs> you know, like, like and, and gets down low. And of course, he's going around this way. Now the woman, the woman, uh, she goes the opposite way. And like I say, these are simple steps. And she's like mad, but you know, not, a little more feminine, you know, but uh, but uh, that, those are just the, the, the simple steps, you know. And of course, you, can, you have the jingle dance, which is where they have all the jingles and all that. And, uh, but that's all for competition. Lots of times, like I say, when it's not a competition powwow, it's uh, it's just uh, for for fun, for get the people together, and our, our elders and our, our people. Another uh, style of dancing is the round dance. And that, that uh, you, you kind of kick, kick, up, kick up your foot the same direction, kick up your foot, and you go around in a circle. The men go in the middle. Well, the drum, the drum's going to be right here, the men go around, and the women on the outside. And they go at a slow, slower pace, just from side to side. Um, that's another, another style of dancing. And then you have... Of course, you have your uh, sneak up, sneak up dance, and that's when uh, it's, it's kind of fast paced. And uh, that's when uh, usually they say that's that's when you have an animal going for its prey. Another animal, they're sneaking up. Yeah. Corn, right? Corn. Yeah. 
with is the Apache uh, Del Rio song. This song here has uh, three languages in it. Uh, it starts out with the Apache language and then it's got uh, of course the English and, uh, and some a little bit of Spanish in it. Um, our people around this area is here before it became uh, the United States used to be Mexico. A lot of Indians used to uh, Walk this land uh, when everything, all the commotion started. And lots of them were forced to learn the Spanish language. It was either that, if they heard anybody talking the English language, or their tongues would be cut off. So they had no choice but to to uh, learn the Spanish language. And a lot of the the, the Mexican families around this area, they. Uh, they adopted them into their, their homes too and they taught them their language. So uh, this song here, like I said, it's got three languages in it. It's gonna start off with, with the Apache, then English, and, and, uh, and, and some, uh, some Spanish.
Jesus, Figueroa, and I'm from Michoacan, Mexico. Uh, I just wanted to, to let y'all know real quick uh, how we greet each other. Have you noticed how we greet each other? Yes. David, pick it up. Yeah, we usually greet each other like this, you know, or even like, like this too, you know. Uh, but this right here, this is, uh, uh, that's a traditional handshake. Wait, hold on. That's a traditional handshake from up here, from, from the plains, from the United States, Canada. But in Mexico, we also have a similar handshake, but it's more like this. We handshake like this, touch each other like this, right? And then we, we grab like so, but we have ourselves like this. So we go like this, like that, and then like that. And in Maya, the Maya people, we actually call that in la que. Thank you. In la que, that, for us, that means we are one, you know? So we, we greet each other, you know, we recognize that we're human beings, that we are the same people. And uh, so my people, we're the Purepecha people. Uh, that's our, our real name. What I mean by real name is, for example, the Navajo don't call themselves Navajos. They call themselves the net, meaning the people, that they were the people. Just like the Apache, they didn't call themselves traditionally the Apache. They call themselves Indic, which means also the people. Uh, so I just wanted to share that with you, that, that I'm from the Purepecha people from Central West Mexico. And my people, you know, we didn't really have buffalo, we didn't have bison. But we had a lot of lakes, so we were fishermen, and we hunted a lot of deer, and we grew a lot of corn. So that's that's where I go. And once again, uh, that's Michoacan. Does anybody know what Michoacan means? Like, have you seen the, the store La Michoacana? <coughs> right? Like, you might go there and get some tropical fruit or something. Well, that has an indigenous name. Uh, it's actually a Nahua, Aztec name, and it comes from two words. It comes from Michi, Michi would mean, which means fish, and then Gan, which means place of. So it means place of the fishermen, place of a lot of fish, place of a lot of the water, place of a lot of lakes, and rivers. So also like Michigan. Yeah, Michigan. What, you know? <laughs> What does Michigan have? It has a lot of lakes around it, right? So it comes from, from that same same uh, you know understanding. So I guess we'll be singing some more songs right now? Okay. So we'll talk more later. Thank you, Andrew. Next song is going to be an intertribal. Uh, like I mentioned before, it's one of the, the styles of dancing. Uh, I'm going to get the guys started here. And uh, I'll go ahead and add... Uh, do a little dancing. Um, get up and do a little dancing so I can demonstrate. Uh, what, uh, okay, here we go. In the crowd.
next song is uh <laughs> Next song is going to be a round dance. That's another uh, one of that I got to you that uh, you go side by side um, like that. Women, we're just going to do one big circle because usually how it's done at the powwows, like I, like I showed you before, we get the men get in the middle and the women get in the outside. Oh, round, round, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you want all of us to help? Yeah, of course. Yeah, you can't get away with that so easy. <laughs> Come on, everybody. Come on. <coughs> I want to go ahead and briefly explain the reason behind what the Amager said about men being in the middle and the men being on the outside. We believe that the that the universe, you know, there, there, there are certain aspects to it like that. The men usually go on a solar cycle, so that's why we're more near to drum. This is more or less uh, the center of, of the universe. So we want to be closer to the sun. So the men basically are on a solar cycle. The women are on a lunar cycle, which they're on the outside. And according, according to some of the uh, Native American legends, that the moon is the more powerful of, of the two entities. You know that the sun gives, gives us light, gives us energy, makes the things grow. The moon helps the plants to grow as well. So when we call, we call the moon the sister and the, or the mother, and we call the sun the father or the brother. So that's the reason why I like that. And also too, men usually have to dance for their power because women are life givers. So they have that power. And that's the reason why we have the power on the outside of the circle and men on the inside of the circle so we can gain that power from the sun. So that briefly explains that that aspect of the culture. Hey so the, the boys and the men are all here. And look all this. Yeah, yeah. But usually when it goes like that, they go opposite Right now, the coach goes in direction.
Uh, like I explained earlier, it's usually a uh, dance in the same direction. Uh, this one is, uh, the dancer is more or less sneaking up on its prey. Uh, you're welcome to use my, my fan, uh, David. This one is called uh, This one's called Little White Owl. Um, that's the name I put uh, my third grandson. I got a count because I got ten grandchildren. <laughs> uh, one for each finger, I guess. Um, when he was born, he uh, it was really funny. Uh, um, he's, uh, he's he's my second. He's a son of my my second my second son. Um, and his uh, mom, when she was having him, uh, she was uh, some kind of warrior too. Because they say when she was having him, she went ahead and he wanted to come out, but he, she pulled him out. I had him pulled about, you know. I guess his head was out and uh, it was hurting too much. I don't know, but whatever. Uh, she ended up pulling him out, and uh, they say when he came out, he had his eyes open. Maybe because she was open. I don't know. But uh, uh, I named him Little White Owl. This, this, is, this song here is dedicated to him, uh, Little White Owl. It's a sneak up dance. So here we go. <sighs> Everybody can hear me, right? Everybody. 
Yeah, I want to stand over here in the sun. It's so cold this morning. <laughs> uh, yeah, like I was sharing with y'all, uh, my people were from Mesoamerica, you know? Mesoamerica. This month we're celebrating what? Native American people, right? But don't forget that the whole continent is America, right? Not just here in the United States of America, but Alaska, Canada, Mexico, Guatemala, Nicaragua, you know, Colombia, Brazil, all the all those countries were once originally inhabited by an original people. Each country has its own tribal people, you know? And a lot of them still live there. You know, a lot of them are still surviving. They're, they have their communities. And then a lot of them have migrated. Have any of you have heard of the Kickapoo right here? In the Rio Grande right here, you know? They're originally from New York. What are they doing all the way over here, you know? But that's, I mean, that's just the faith of Native American people. One, that was a traditional mode of, you know, surviving was to, to go somewhere, you know? Like, when there wasn't enough food around this area, you would just move to somewhere else. And then later, you know, by, by other reasons, people had to move, you know, to survive. Uh, so that's, that's one reason I'm here, you know? That's the reason I'm here in San Antonio. That's the reason why we're all here, actually, in San Antonio, you know? Was because at one point, our ancestors were going through a hard time and we had to move somewhere to make a living, right? Uh, but let's not forget the original people, you know? That's something that I like to do whenever I go somewhere, you know, whenever I go to the, to the East Coast, to the West Coast, or, you know, to the North or to the South, I always like to learn, I always like to remember the, the original native people of those, those regions, you know? And does anybody know the original people from here? The Kauwiltekin, right? Uh, but the Kauwiltekin was a name given to these people uh, just recently, like not too long ago. And it comes from the, from the, the, the name of the state Coahuila in Northern Mexico. And uh, the actual name of Coahuila is, is an Aztec, is a Nahuatl also. And it, it comes from the word Coahuil, which means tree. And Coahuila, like La, means also the place, the place of the trees. So but we have to remember that these people here did not speak Nahuatl, or did not really have relations, did not really claim themselves to be Aztec. Um, but the Aztec people named different regions because they traveled a lot, they traded a lot with, with other people. Um, and that brings me to, to one of the names we have for this side of the continent in Nahuatl, and then also this, this, uh, this city was the original name of the city and the original people. What we people from Mesoamerica consider like a lot of this land to be is Anahuac. Anahuac means the land between the two big lakes, you know, between the two oceans. Is it true? Are we between two big bodies of water? You know, so you can just tell that our people used to, you know, they, they like to learn, they like to travel, they like to meet with other tribes. Just like my people right here, I'm representing my people because that's what we used to do. We used to go to different regions, like right here we're with the Apaches, and we used to, uh, you know, we used to trade with them. We used to have ceremonies with them. We used to dance, sing together, go hunting, you know, in good times, of course, right? <laughs> and then uh, I, the, the name for, for this region right here, does anybody know? Does anybody know? Do you think 5,000 years ago people were, hey, man, let's go to San Antonio and, you know, get some burgers or something, right? <laughs> no, it's just recent, right? San Antonio is uh, in Spanish for Saint Anthony, right? So that's just that's just the recent name that the Spanish gave this region. But the original name is Yanaguana or Yanquana. Yanquana meaning the place where the river is born. You know, uh, has anybody been to San Pedro Springs? San Pedro Springs, right, is in downtown San Pedro Park. You know, I think it's the second oldest net, like park in the United States. And then uh, there's another spring at Incarnate Word, and they call that the Blue Hole. 
and then there's another spring in in uh, New Braunfels. You know, there's a Comal, you know, river that forms there. And then there's the springs in San Marcos. You know, there's springs in San Marcos. And then there's some springs in Austin called Barton Springs. So the only reason that we're here today is because of those springs, because of that water. You know, that's one of the, the most common issue here in San Antonio and South Texas, water, the water, the issue of water. So the reason people originally inhabited here 10,000 years ago was because of that water. So the people here consider that sacred, you know, because without the water, we don't survive. The animals don't survive, the plant life doesn't survive. So they named this this uh, this region, this village, Yanaguana, Yanquana, meaning the, the village by the river, the village by the spring, the village of the water, you know. And I do want to mention, you know, you mentioned earlier, this is a, a gourd rattle, but the, this, these are used uh, for, for ceremonies, for healing ceremonies. You know, the, the native people from here live in, live in what is South Texas and Northern Mexico. That's, that's the area where, where the peyote cactus grows. And there's, you know, to, to our people from here, the indigenous people, you know, that's a sacred, sacred, you know, it's like the body of, of God right there. You know, like when you go to church, you know, that, that wine and the, and the bread, that's supposed to represent Jesus Christ, right? Well, to our people, that represents God also, you know, represents the Son. And, uh, but this right here, this we use it for ceremonies. I'm going to sing a song right now in a little bit. Uh, but some historians say that the people from here don't exist anymore. That they've gone extinct, just like the bison, right? Uh, but I know a lot of them. You know, like they always invite me to go eat barbacoa with them, you know. <laughs> they, I mean, they like to dance the hano, you know. They like to, you know, ride horses now and stuff like that. I don't know, but but I'm pretty sure they're, they're still alive. And... A lot of them that I know speak the language, you know. They have their traditional dances and everything. So they're still alive. They're still around, but they're just not uh, as present as before, you know, because we have so many different people coming from all over the world that we forget about the original people, you know. Uh, and then we, we confuse them because they, they, they dress and look like us now, you know. They speak English, they speak Spanish now, you know. But they're still here. Um, but this is one of their, their main implements right here, uh, the main musical instruments. And actually one of the things is that they shared to me one time is that they used to dance a lot. They used to dance. And once the government, you know, said they couldn't dance anymore, they put themselves into the rattle. Was it, like, would anybody be tell me, like, would anybody be able to tell me what does this look like? Right? So the people told me because they couldn't dance anymore in public, they couldn't dance in their ceremonies because the church didn't allow them to. They put themselves in the rattle. This this represents their hair, and this represents their legs. And so this is uh, you know, this is them right here. This is them dancing. So I'm gonna sing a song, and I do want to share that that. Uh, the language used for, for these songs are in the language from here. And not only do, do these people still sing their songs, but people all over the United States, all over the reservations, the Indian reservations, you're talking about Navajos, you're talking about Lakota, you're talking about Cherokee, you're talking about nations up in Canada, Cree, singing the, the, the language from here, the original language, the original people's language. And they use a lot of Yanawana in the songs. And these songs are used in the Native American church, which is one of our, you know, like main institutions here in the United States and Canada, but also in Mexico. Um, so I'm gonna share a song with you, okay? Is, uh, yo, 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 y
song that actually means something you know a lot of our songs here are intertribal meaning it's it's a, a language that all the tribes used to be able to sing and dance to right <coughs> like my people we spoke one language their people spoke a different language you know that way they spoke a different language over there they spoke another language so we were the creators of actually sign language right sign language i mean i don't know how to do sign language but <laughs> but you know we, we were cre the creators, the original creators of sign language, and we created songs and stuff like that that were intertribal that we can all dance to and sing to, you know? That's why we have different tribes now being able to get together to sing and dance. Um, but th th this, uh, this song right here, Yana Wana, is saying water spirit, you know? Water spirit. Yana Wana, Yana Wana means water spirit. Yana wana yo, yana yo yo yo, yana wana yo, yana yo yo yo. It says, Yana wana spirit, you are everything. You are everything. And then at the end, it says, Yana wana yo, we know. Hey, yana, hey, man, yo, way. That actually means, uh, that is everything. That is all I have to say. So it says, Water spirit, you are everything. Water spirit, you are everything. That's it. That's, that, that, that's all I have to say. That's everything I want to say. Okay? So I just wanted to share that with y'all. That the language from here is still alive. And that a lot of us Native Americans, we still use it. Okay? Thank you very much. All right. Uh, next song we're going to do, it's a Lapan Apache uh, recent traditional song, I should say. Uh, just to go along with Jesus' thing, um, we also too believe in, in the spirit of the water. That's the reason why the Kunitsa are known as the big water people. The Kunitsa, it, uh, of course, the Pontapachi Kuna means, you know, big or, or enormous and size water. So that's where we get the, the terminology big water people. But uh, our people were originally from the, the Napehe people. You probably know them now as the Mescaleros. Natehe comes from Nahindehe, which means people of the Mescal. It was uh, basically a derivative from a Navajo word. Uh, it wasn't until later on that it became Mescaleros and Salineros. Mescalero means Mescal eater. Salinero means salt eater. So that's the reason why we have we had the two different bands uh, of people. So when the Napehe finally uh, had influence over certain Lapan people, we became Lapan Apaches. And our leader back in the day, the Gotes, which means mustache one, he took the Kunitsa people and went into southern uh, Texas along the, where the Laredo and Brownsville is. And we were one of the largest bands of Lapan Apaches with over 300 to 400 people in one band more than any other, other the 14 bands of the Pon Apaches there were. So this song came to me during a ceremony. It was during a rainstorm. And uh, it represents the, the uh, rain bird, who is uh, one of our, uh, our stories that we tell about how, you know, how uh, the people were saved by uh, one of the more sacred of the Thunderbirds. Uh, we know there's four Thunderbirds uh, among our people, and Rainbird happens to be one of them. 
and she is the building block of life. So this is the Rainbird song, and I hope that y'all enjoy it. circles and uh, fires, you know, fires in the ground to tell you that, you know, they do have a sense of humor. And so, um, and even back in the day, so here's an example of like a story we usually tell like around the campfire. Um, so like, uh, there was this guy, he was dreaming uh, four nights in a row about uh, how he could fly over the Medina River. And so uh, every time he go to the edge of the cliff, going over the Medina, Medina River, he'd see this beautiful rock on the left hand side. And on the right hand side, he'd see this beautiful tree. And then when he'd opened his arms, he could feel the wind as though like he could fly. And so on the fourth night, he dreamt this dream. Uh, he told his wife, hey, let's go swimming in the Medina River. But really it was so that he could test to see if he could fly. Uh, so they go out, they're swimming. And while his wife was looking away, he snuck away to go to the top of the, this cliff that he saw. And it was perfect, it was just like in his dream. There was the rock on, the, on his left hand side, the beautiful tree on the, on the right, and he opened his arms and he could just feel that wind. And if he started to flap his arms, he could fly. And so, with great confidence and uh, thinking that, man, this is it, I'm gonna fly, I'm gonna be the first human ever to fly. So then he started to take off, he jumped off the cliff, and he failed miserably. He fell all the way down into the river and yeah, that was great. So then his wife, all worried, goes over to him and is like, hey Enoch, are you okay? Why did you jump off the cliff? He was so embarrassed because he couldn't fly that all he said to his wife was, be silent woman. 
And uh, the only time we ever heard the story was on his deathbed. Um, that was the only time he felt he wasn't embarrassed enough to tell the story. Um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and tell a little story myself. Um, this one is why the bat at one time they say he had feathers. But he was so ugly they told him I want something pretty, I want something better. Let me see what I can do for you. So he got together with the rest of the birds and He's too ugly. He wants to be pretty. He wants to be better at what he is. See, we, how can you all help me? How can you all help me out? Uh, okay, no volunteers. All right, I'm gonna sit on the line right now. I'm gonna take a feather from each one of you all and give it to Mr. Bat. Call the person. Now he's gonna pluck me. But anyway, uh, he ended up doing that, and uh, Mr. Bad was, he, he became the best looking bird. He became the fastest bird. The best looking bird, he got the Macaulay uh, feathers, of course, the, the fastest bird, the eagle, the one that can fly the highest, he got an eagle feather, so he can fly high. He could go at night, of course, he's already a bat, so he's good at night, but he could. He, he would be a better hunter, like the owl. So he was strutting his stuff. He'd go out there and show off in front of the other birds. Hey, look at me, I got everything. I got everything. I can do anything better than any of y'all, because I got stuff for each one of you. And he was bragging and bragging and bragging. The birds got fed up. Said, what's the creator told him? What creator? What's going on? I mean, look what you did to us. <laughs> and he says, uh, don't worry about it. So he ended up getting uh, everybody together. He said, we're going to meet uh, this certain day, and we're going to have a contest. We're going to have a contest to uh, see who's the best bird. And of course, Mr. Bat, oh, he was, he said, King, I'm going to take this. OK, so the day came, and everybody said, well, you know who's going to win for you. Why you going to do this? So they came and sure enough, uh, he said, who's the prettiest bird? Well, Macaw came out, well, I am, no, no. Bat came out, I'm prettier than you, look at me. So he won that kind of Mr. Hawk was out there and he was a good hunter. Mr. Raw, he had a brother him, so he was even a better hunter. So he won that one. We came to the who flew the best and who flew the furthest and who flew the highest. We know the eagle flies the highest. So Mr. Bass. This is easy, this is too easy. So he uh they started, you know, the eagle took off and Mr. Bass gave him a head start then. This is easy. So he, the eagle took off, you know, and he started going, ah, you know, Mr. Bat, show sure enough, backwards and everything, you know, and passes him up. Higher and higher, close to the sun. And they say that the eagles, the tips of the eagle feathers are brown because he gets close to the sun. But well, Mr. Bat, you know, he's like, Shh. he got too close to the sun. <laughs> he got way too close to the sun. Those, those feathers started falling off. Sure enough, you know, he started coming down and coming down. And he was so ashamed, he was so ashamed of what he had done, you know, that uh, you know where they hide, and you know they only come out at night. So the creator taught him a lesson. In story. <laughs> always uh, be grateful for who you are, you know. The story is always be grateful for who you are, you know. And, uh, and, you know, it's always try to be better, of course, uh, advance in life and all that, but be thankful for what God has given you, always. Lift your hand 
if you're a child. Raise your hand. Raise your hand if you're an adult. All right. So a lot of native people, children, kids like you, are actually little people. So you're 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 adults, but you're just little. You know. You're capable of understanding a lot of things, but you're you're still small. You still have to grow, right? But I know a lot of you, when you see a teepee, you say, oh, Indians, right? You know, Indian people. Well, I'm gonna tell you a little story about how children were the ones that actually made teepees possible, you know? And it's just a, you know, just a little short story. And it talks about one time when the Lakota, the, the Sioux, the Lakota people from South and North Dakota, they were, you know, they were going through their territory and, and they couldn't find food. They were having a hard time. And so they started asking different animals. You know, they started asking different animals, hey, uh, hawk, you know, have you seen anything over there in that area? And the hawk, no, brother, there's nothing over there. And then they would ask, you know, the, the elk and the buffaloes, hey, brothers, you know, have you seen anything over there? You know, we're hungry, we, you know, we want to eat something. They're like, no, we haven't seen nothing, you know, there's, there's nothing over there. So they asked other animals too, they asked, you know, to, uh, to the north, to the south, they asked different animals, you know. They're like, hey, we, uh, you know, we're having through a hard time, you know, we need to eat. And no, like, nobody, the coyote said there was nothing, you know, the wolf, the bear, there's nothing, you know. So at this time, the people didn't have shelters. At this time, the people just lived under the stars and under the moon. term also you know but a lot of our elders you know are stuck with that term Indian a lot of people you know it's all right you know but but the best thing is to move forward you know and and personally myself I like to use uh, just native you know or even refer to my people you know like the Purepecha you know like oh like I'm Purepecha you know so it's always good so thank you for using that you know the new term thank you Uh, the next song is going to be an Apache song. Uh, uh, so this song I know a lot of my brothers already sang uh, uh, river songs, uh, rain songs. Uh, this one is called the Rainbow Song. It's after the, the waters have already gone or the sun comes out at the same time, there's a reflection. So it's an Apache song, so I hope you enjoy it.
Okay, here we go. Did you guys, uh, you guys got the good steps on uh, the round dance? Let's do another round dance. We want to go this way, right? Yes, uh-huh. Uh, you want to come out this way? Uh, the next song is called Pajarito Rojo, which means uh, Little Red Bird. There's a, there's a, there's a story behind, uh, there's a story behind the, the, the song. Um, I myself work for HEB, I'm a partner, and uh, I started working back in 2004. Just, uh, for the store, I, used, I, I put 16 years at the at the warehouse and the rest uh, here at the store. And uh, the location's off of Fountain 78. And uh, when I first got there, it was a little red bird at Harden. And I'd say it was probably around summertime. He was in there, and every morning he would jerk away. And he'd make my morning. Every morning would be it was a special morning for me. Because I could hear him just singing a song, you know. And uh, little by little, he became a nuisance because uh, he was in there too long. He started uh, eating some of the vegetables and finally found where the seeds were. And he was, he was just being a bird, you know, trying to survive. This, this, uh, his colors started changing because he wasn't outside. He would just be inside and outside. And they wanted to get rid of him. Get a baby gun, shoot him down. Oh, no, no. I said, oh, no, no, no. Let me see what I can do. What I did, I started burning towards the door, little by little, with mercy. But sure enough, you know, uh, he, uh, he, uh, the last day I remember, put the food outside the door, and he flew out, and we didn't know what to do. And, uh, I remember there was a little patio table there, and he got him down. I myself, he was, I, I thought he was talking to me, you know, he thanked me, you know, for letting me go. Uh, so he turned around, you know, before he flew off and just kind of glanced at me and then he was gone. So that, that, he was really special to me. Now. And uh, I made a song for him. And this is it. It's called Pajari Toro. Little Ripper. Brown Dance song.
song is a uh, is a uh, victory song. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do this, and then after this, we're gonna do the veteran song. Do we have any veterans here in, with us? Okay. When we sing a veteran song, I'd like you to come come up here, you know, so we can honor you. Um, and uh, it's it's always an honor to thank you know our veterans for everything we have done for us. Um, but I'll let you know when unless you want to come up now it's up to you but we got this uh, victory song and then we got the words okay thank you
and uh, this is going to be our closing song. Thank you, everybody. For thank, you. thank you. Thank you.
general area and uh, please look at a website. We have upcoming events over at the Phil Harburger Park Conservancy. Uh, next month is Dinosaur George, guys. So everybody come out. We'll be right here in the gathering hall for the first uh, Saturday. And the fourth Saturday, don't forget, it's about turkeys. And that'll be on the other side. So thanks. Thank you very much for coming out. And uh, yeah.